Hey everyone, thanks for checking in. So, why am I reviewing the Horner DXTP? It's been around forever. Everyone has reviewed it. A lot of people don't like it because it does offer a minimal expansion profile compared to other, to other options. That's just how it's designed. People don't like Hornady because they think it's cheap. It's, it's a premium brand. But I think it comes back to the expansion profile. It's not pretty. It doesn't look like an HST, which looks about as perfect as anything as you can get out there. I'm doing this because I need a baseline. I need a baseline test because this is the first time I'm using 10% ordnance gel with four layers of denim. There's another reason that I'm reviewing this ammo. It has been one of the few premium JHPs with availability in 2020 and 21. Hornady does package 25 rounds compared to many of their competitors selling 20 rounds per box. Advertised velocity is 1,175 feet per second. This brand is not produced with nickel-plated brass and that will be viewed as a detriment for some consumers. The 124 grain XTP cartridge is a bit shorter than these premium options, the 124 grain Spear Gold Dot and Federal HST. The cavity of the 124 XTP is one of the smallest you will encounter in a 9mm JHP. The XTP bullet is well known to be one of the most accurate on the market, used quite often by handloaders. With the Glock 17, we surpassed the advertised velocity twice within five attempts. The average of these shots was below advertised. From the 4-inch barrel Glock 19, which will be our test gun in a moment, we surpassed the advertised velocity only once. The other velocities were remarkably inconsistent for Hornady ammo. The Glock 26 carries a barrel just under 3.5 inches, and I realize these days that many people might EDC with the 3-inch barrel. This shot string was much more consistent with minimal deviation. I'll close out this segment by saying that the recoil at these velocities provides the opportunity for fast and accurate follow-up shots. Finally, after all these years, some 10% calibrated gel. I did not buy this. It's expensive. You get one use out of it. Made it from scratch. Still get one use out of it using Knox powder. 18 ounces of that to one gallon of distilled water. So there's four gallons of water in this block plus the appropriate mix. I had tested it previously and had the correct BB calibration, which you can see here. There are the five shots with the appropriate air rifle velocity. Steel BBs, my neighbor's dogs like this. And um, I'm, I'm excited about this. It's, a, it's between 39 and 40 degrees right now. 39 is the official temperature, so we're really, really close. Four layers of denim. This is official 16 ounce denim. It was difficult to find this. I had to get it from Scotland, so I have a roll of it. This is a demanding protocol, IWBA, International Wound Ballistics Association. This is a more demanding protocol than the four layers, uh, FBI four layers that I have uh, used in the past. And I get it, a lot of folks say, just use one layer of cotton. That's really setting the bar low. So this is gonna be a test for the XTP with that small uh, hollow point cavity. Let's see how it does with the Glock 19, five shots from 10 feet. I see some water bubbling. Reset. Something I had not mentioned up to this point, but a lot of people already know this, the XTP is a, is a proven deep penetrator, and that's exactly what happened here. I could have done a better job in lining things up. I just make, <laughs> basically made a straight line, although that's not bad for a defensive uh, scenario, so everything is lined up. We had three that made it to the first jug. I had to stop and uh, get the waterfall from uh, running into the wiring, and that was kind of important. But we had three that went into the first jug, complete pass-throughs. Can't get too good of a focus right here, but they all expanded, and that's, that's what the XTP looks like. So we'll get a close-up of those in a moment, and at a glance, I caught two others here toward the back of the block. So they're coming in between 16 and 17. We'll get some exact measurements here in just a moment. Wrap up here the following morning. So the daytime noise is this is not at 10 p.m. So this is the point of entry. Everything is really centered in this area. So this is just a chunk that I carved out of the middle of the block. And the greatest majority of disruption with these shots and then you lose that momentum is happening here in the first six, seven, eight 
inches and then it settles down and I'll give you an example of that. This is best viewed under light and the next few seconds here you're looking at a, just a, a segment of just that. So there's uh, not the definition I was hoping to get out of 10% gel. I think SimTest that I used for a number of years does the best job of that. First, I have to address the lack of visibility for the block shots. I was not aware of this until I viewed the footage while compiling and editing the video. As for these outcomes, the second shot was the first to pass through into the water jug, so I cannot blame all of those on the shot group. Viewing these measurements, the three pass-throughs are to the far left. Weight retention is very good and expected with the XTP. This bullet holds together within its velocity spec. The expansion results confirm what I mentioned in the opening overview. If anything, the XTP is boringly consistent. Accuracy potential, velocity, penetration, expansion. I hope you found the video informative and not so much boringly consistent with what you already knew about the Hornady XTP. Thanks for watching.